Welcome back everybody, RM Army fans. I am Chris Kiefer. This is the 2021 RMZ 250. We don't need any introduction. You guys know what this thing's about, right? Obviously you've been around a little bit. Maybe you're looking to get something a little bit less expensive. You're new to the motocross world. We're gonna talk about reasons why this RMZ 250, albeit nothing's changed, why it is a fun machine, why you guys should buy one, and maybe a couple things that you guys should address if you have one of these things. So stay tuned, we're gonna go ride them. We're gonna talk a little bit about it afterwards and decide on which bike, maybe yellow, is right for you. Stay tuned. All right, guys, we're wrapped up here at State Fair MX 2021 RMZ 250. To the right of me, Kenny Day, Fox Athlete Manager? Yep, pro. Pro, pro man, oh, athlete. sorry, sorry, Kenny. Pro manager. He is the guy for Kenny Roxon, Adam Cincerello, and the Pro Circuit Kawasaki guys. But you may have noticed the Honda logos. This is a Suzuki test. He just ripped off some of Kenny's gear today because I grabbed him last minute and uh, he's out here ripping it up. So um, that explains the Fox Honda gear. Yeah, you know, I drove straight from Salt Lake here just so I could do this, and uh, this is all I could pull together. So I think I look better in it than what Ken does, though. All right, so he has a little bit of time on Suzuki's in the past, so I want to break it down a little bit for you guys out there. We've seen a lot of videos. You guys seen everything out there already. What about the RMZ 250? There's not much going on, right? It has an MX 2.0 tuner that you can adjust the fuel and the ignition mapping. Um, we have a video that will show you that up on the RMZ 450 video. But right now, what we want to focus on is why this is still a viable choice out there for a lot of people. Kenny rides all different kinds of bikes. He was assigned a KTM 350 SXF earlier in the year. 150 pounds? Yeah, 55. I'm a little fat right now. So from me, I've rode a lot of this bike a lot last year. It was oversprung for me. I needed to go lighter valving. I'm sorry, lighter springs. So 150 pound. He's a little bit more of an aggressive rider than me. Wrap it up for you. What do you think about the engine right here? I know you've had a little bit of time, but you're a little nervous earlier today, I know. So I actually had a 2009 uh, RMZ 250F, and it had some engine stuff. And I, I remember then it was a little slow. So today I was nervous. Like, I've been riding KTMs and stuff, and I've ridden some Yamahas, and they're fast now. So jumping on this thing, it still surprised me a little bit. I, I think that it could use some more bottom a lot okay. um, because you really got to ride this thing to make it go, which is fun at a place like State Fair. The ruts are kind of deep. You got to get in and out quick. Um, so there's still some snap to the Suzuki, but of course, like it falls on its face. I think quick. I think for what he's trying to explain, if if you haven't ridden RMZ, it has really good RPM response, like it's snappy, but past that, it doesn't have the torque feel like a Yamaha or even a Kawasaki, right? Correct. It just signs off. Like uh, a KTM will just go forever. It, you don't even have to shift. It'll right. keep pulling. So the Suzuki will just kind of fall. So you're constantly third, fourth, back down to second into the turns. Kind of like a 125 when I was younger. You had to be up, down, up, down, and to keep it. A little busy. Yeah, very busy. So he's an experienced rider, obviously, Loretta Lynn champion. Um, I think for me, the engine is a good novice to intermediate type engine. Kids that are coming off of a 125 that may be intimidated by the 250, the chassis for me, and before we get to him, I feel like is light and nimble, even though on paper it doesn't show that. Um, it turns, obviously it's a Suzuki. We always talk about good at turns, and he can talk a little bit about that. But it's a friendly machine for a guy that may be wanting to not have as much power as a Yamaha or a Kawasaki. Still has a good enough amount of power to, to tow you over jumps here. So it's just not the top tier of power output in the 250 class. 
Yeah, I agree. So as a beginner bike, if you're coming off of a Super Mini or a 125, this would be absolutely perfect. It's it's not so explosive to where you're not going to be able to hang on to it. Uh, it's very friendly as far as power and handling. So it'd be a good starter bike. Uh, we messed around with the MX Tuner a little bit. We actually changed the coupler to a white coupler. What did that do for you? White coupler made it a little more snappier off the bottom, uh, revved a little bit farther. So I did like that, but I felt like it sighed off a little quicker. So I did have to shift a bit more. So if you're a Suzuki rider, I feel like you guys out there aren't lazy people. So uh, connecting a couple wires is not a big deal. You got to kickstart this machine. Not a big deal. I've been kickstarting motorcycles for years. So little nuances to me, I think, really um, hurt this machine in a way. And it's some of us, I think it's some our fault as well in the media is that we harp on things that it hasn't um, been updated to, but still an overall very good machine. So chassis wise, real quick, I said at corners well, what do you feel like? So I, I remember from 09, the Suzuki was phenomenal in the turn. So I had a 250, I've ridden a 450 as well, but these things always just set into the turn so good and smooth. There's no front end twitch, it's just, it's solid and you can be consistent every lap. Um, I will say, I think that I noticed today, I, sometimes I struggle with a KTM having a little too much flex and then a Honda being too stiff. This is like a pretty good in, in between, in the middle. Uh, chassis is still stiff when it needs to be, but not too much. Uh, I also noticed that for me, the chassis is a little firm when brand new. These things do break in about 10 to 15 hours. So if you have one of these, give it some time. It does get a little bit flexier, um, which actually calms the chassis down. But watching Kenny ride today, I was surprised the suspension was as good as it looked out there. It was a little bit stiff for me. Obviously, State Fair doesn't have a lot of bumps, but the bike seems to be pretty flat and settled when coming in the corners. It was a little stiff. Like, there's spots where you get a little chatter, and you can feel that if with it being stiff. But overall, it wasn't that bad. But we didn't have any big bumps today. Uh, for the conditions, it was good. I Personally, though, if I go to another track like Fox Raceway, I would probably go softer. So overall package to me, um, I didn't ride today, obviously, but I have not spent some time on this bike. It's a solid package, still viable for a lot of people out there. There are great deals on Suzuki's right now, and they're still available, unlike other machines where they're just simply out of them until 2022. So 2021 RMZ 250, great bike, not as loud. I wanted to mention this too, I forgot. The Kawasaki is loud, the 250. This thing isn't loud. It has a nice tone to this muffler. Um, rent all fat bars. The grips are a little gnarly on my hands. Uh, there it is. He's got grapes. Yep. <laughs> but you can change out that stuff really easy. And uh, you can find out more information at SuzukiCycles.com. Of course, as always, visit us, RacerXOnline.com, for more tests, more lifestyle videos, just fun stuff over here. Subscribe, 12 issues, 30 bucks, RacerX publication. We'll be back on another go-around, another test a couple weeks. See ya.